Welcome, everyone. On this episode of Ask the Alchemist, our friend from Twitter, at Stephanie K, has three questions related to tempering. Let's call this one the tempering episode. Is it possible to over-temper chocolate? If so, what happens? Nice, really nice question. Absolutely it is possible. It gets me into um, a nice discussion. People tend to think of tempering as black and white. You know, it's either tempered or it's not tempered. And in my head, um, I tend to think of it as a number line. In the center, so like zero, you have untempered chocolate. There's no crystals, there's no nothing. And then in both directions, as you spread out, you have degrees of temper. I can't prove this, but it's a nice way to think about it. The amount of type five you have, or maybe the size of the, the type five crystals that have propagated through. And at some point, yes, you get to a point where you have such an aggressive type five that what happens is it's too hard. It doesn't melt in your mouth it, and it doesn't release its flavor. Yeah, I would consider that over-tempered. You know, but a milk chocolate, I would say, you know, most likely you cannot over-temper milk chocolate because the milk fat in there is getting in the way of a full and complete crystallization. And, and that's a great example of showing you can have a tempered piece of chocolate that's not you know, fully tempered or over tempered. And the same goes with unte or with bloom chocolate. You can have a little bloom and depending on, you know, how slow it's set up, do you have mostly fours or a lot of fours and threes and twos and it's a, a crumbly mess to, you know, really, you know, that negative 10 of bloom chocolate that it just, it just crumbles because there's no structure there at all. It's like sandstone. As a matter of fact, there's a term called degree of temper. And there is a, a way you can test it. It is a, uh, a laboratory methodology. I've done an Ask the Alchemist on it, and we describe it. And it um, will put it in the, I always want to call them liner notes, but the description below. There we go. I'm a, I'm a savage when it comes to this, this YouTube stuff. Um, where we talk about how you can, you can have a batch of chocolate sitting in the tempering and depending on how much crystal is in there and how you cool it, what the degree of temper would be. Um, and you can control that. If you know, if you want to get it really into tempering, you know, this is that art and science. You know, if it's too hard of a temper, you could bring it up half a degree. You're going to destroy some, but not all of those type five. And what you'll get is a softer temper. So you get into a lot of nuance. Most people are just struggling between, is it tempered or bloomed? It, there's, a, there's a range. At Stephanie K asks, are beta crystals the same as type five crystals? I have noticed many chocolate professionals refer to beta crystals. Um, yes, uh, if my memory serves me correctly, those are indeed the same thing. Without my literature sitting in front of me, I've got a little memory that it, that it actually might be beta prime, which is a, a beta with a, uh, like an apostrophe on it. Um, but if that's the way they're discussing it, it sounds like they're discussing uh, the stable type five type of crystal. I'd say, yeah, those are the same thing. It's just different notation. At Stephanie K asks, is it true that if you have to fill chocolate shells with ganache or praline, that you have to temper the filling first or the chocolate will bloom? I've heard this one and I did some playing with it. Um, for the ganache itself, um, it's not so much that the chocolate will bloom. Uh, uh, and I, oh, I, I've read this uh, and I did some experiments on my own. And I want to say it's on SeriousEats.com, uh, but I, that may not be the case. Um, but they, they did testing of using tempered chocolate and untempered chocolate for making ganache. So it doesn't bloom, but it absolutely does behave differently. Um, there's a different viscosity and handling properties. And uh, when I played with it, I, yeah, I, I think I liked uh, the tempered chocolate better. And the reason I say it won't bloom is you're adding a liquid, which then just disrupts 
all crystallization going on um, inside of your inside of your chocolate. So again, not blooming, but yeah, it does seem to have an effect. I don't know the chemistry behind that. Um, uh, but again, no right or wrong. I've done many a ganache that I didn't temper, works just fine, shelf life was the same. Um, I think it's a personal preference on what you want the texture to be. So try it both ways and just see. But no, you don't have to worry about the blooming. But yeah, there's, it, it does make a difference. Thanks for tuning in. If you have a question for Alchemist John, please fill out the form on our website. There's a link in the description. We may answer it here, the website, or possibly even in our upcoming podcast, if the Alchemist ever lets me work on editing it. Having said that, it's possible your question has already been answered, and that it's sitting there waiting for you on chocolatealchemy.com. Alchemist John has been answering these questions in various forms for well over a decade. He's already answered over 250 user questions. There's some fascinating reads there if you love making chocolate and growing your craft. That's it for today. Go make some chocolate.